And that concludes topical questions. We'll now turn to the next item of business, which is a statement by Angela Constance on social security benefits. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of her statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. I would uh, ask members who wish to speak or ask a question to press their request to speak buttons if they wish to. And I call on Angela Constance. Thank you, President Officer. Today I will outline plans for the first social security benefits to be delivered by the Scottish Government. These include the new Best Start grant, funeral expense assistance and the supplement to carers allowance. This is the next milestone in building Scotland's new social security system and these are the first benefits our new social security agency will deliver. This is the largest, most complex programme of change in the history of devolution and we have made excellent progress since the last election. We are building on four years experience of delivering the Scottish Welfare Fund and using discretionary housing payments to mitigate the bedroom tax. We are also building on experience of the smooth devolution of DHPs at the beginning of April and we have made progress with DWP to agree the implementation of universal credit flexibilities. And we have already announced that we will create a new social security agency with an efficient central function and a strong local presence across Scotland. We held a wide-ranging consultation exercise last year, hearing from people about what they need from a social security system. People with lived experience will keep informing our decisions and our deeds at every step of our journey. That is why we invited people to join our experience panels and I'm delighted to say that around 2,300 people have volunteered. We've also appointed the Disability and Carers Benefits Expert Advisory Group. They will advise Scottish Ministers on policy options on disability and carers benefits and actions that will change lives for the better. As the Minister for Social Security told Parliament in her very recent statement about the Social Security Agency, there will be no contracting with the private sector to undertake assessment for disability benefits. So, presiding officer, building on this momentum, my announcement today sets the timescale for delivering uh, the first devolved benefits. During this Parliament, 10 benefits will transfer to us. DHPs have already transferred successfully and are delivered by local authorities. Our top priority is that people receive the right payments at the right time. And this is a big task. Once all the benefits are devolved, we will make more payments each week than the Scottish Government currently makes in a year. And we need to get this right. It is one of the most important things that people have told us through the consultation and our other engagement. One of the lessons from previous social security changes by the UK government is that arbitrary target dates without a clear plan to meet them it will lead to failure, uh, as we have seen with universal credit. We have always been clear that the devolution of social security powers is a phased approach uh, with many incremental steps to the safe and secure transition of powers uh, as opposed to a one-off event. So let me start with our plans for the Best Start grant and funeral expense assistance. These are early benefits uh, and they will make an immediate difference to people and fulfil commitments uh, set out in our manifesto. We will start delivery of Scotland's first new benefit, the new Best Start grant by summer 2019. And this replacement to the Sure Start maternity grant it is a substantial investment in their child's early years. As part of our wider work aimed at giving each child the best start in life, it will contribute to tackling child poverty, improving health and raising attainment. And the current UK Government Sure Start grant is a single payment of £500 to families on low incomes. We will increase that to £600 for the first child, recognising that the UK rate has not increased in over a decade. We will also reintroduce payments of £300 for second and subsequent children, a cut made by the UK Government in 2011. And we'll make no judgement on the number of children people decide to have and we'll place no limit on the number of children we help in any qualifying family. We will also provide two payments of £250 uh, during a child's early years, around the time they start nursery and before starting school. This means qualified families will receive £1,100 
over the course of the early years of their first child's life compared to just £500 at present. Plus further support for additional children. For a two-child family, this means an additional £1,400. We have started work on the application process for Best Start Grant. From the earliest stage, we are working with parents who would be eligible. We have shared and tested a draft application form, making changes based on feedback from the people who will need it to be sure it is clear, simple and easy to follow. And we will reach more people by making the application process easier to follow and joining up support with the services parents use day to day. And this includes linking with Healthy Start food vouchers, which provide nutritional support to pregnant women and young children. Take up of the Sure Start maternity grant is low, it's around 50%. So improving take up and increasing the support provided will make an immediate impact on low income families in Scotland. Sign officer, we will also deliver the new funeral expense assistance by summer 2019, uh, providing critical support to people at a difficult time. Uh, we heard through our consultation about the stress caused by the complexity of the application process and time taken to make payments. We have already committed that we will aim to process applications within 10 working days of receipt of a completed application. As with Best Start Grant, a key area of work is developing an application process which is easier to understand. We will listen to people with experience of the current system and seek expert opinions, including from the Funeral Payment Reference Group. Simplifying this process and increasing awareness will increase take up from its current level of around 60%. Signing officer, I now want to turn to carers' allowance. We are all agreed on the vital contribution that carers make to Scotland, and it's not right that people with caring responsibilities receive less support than others. That's why the First Minister committed in October 2015 to increasing the level of carers' allowance to that of job seekers' allowance. We have been working hard with DWP to investigate how to increase this support as quickly as we can. And I thank them for their constructive and collaborative support in helping us achieve that commitment as early as possible. So, President Officer, I can announce to the Chamber today that we will do so uh, from next summer. As an interim arrangement to get this done as early as possible, people in Scotland will continue receiving carers' allowance from DWP but they will receive the increase from our social security agency and they will receive that support twice a year. And whilst the first payments will be in the summer of 2018, they will cover from April 2018. So carers can be assured that they will get funding that covers uh, all of the 2018-19 financial year. So we will invest over 30 million pounds uh, a year in increasing this support and I am delighted that this policy will now be delivered uh, by the Scottish Government and I look forward to seeing a future UK Government uh, follow our lead. All of this, of course, presiding officer, is subject to the consideration of Parliament and when we introduce the Social Security Bill next month, I hope the support that we've had today within and out with Parliament to an approach to Social Security uh, will continue. Signing officer, our plans for the first wave of benefits show the difference we can make to the people of Scotland through our new social security powers. Best Start Grant, our first new benefit, will greatly improve the support we provide and better aligns with our other work to support children and families. Funeral expense assistance will make important changes to the way we support people with the cost of funerals, providing more certainty and clarity for people at a difficult time. And we are working as quickly as possible to give carers in Scotland uh, more money. It is right that the first new act of the agency will be to address the unfairness of the current system where carers receive less support than others. The benefits that we will deliver may be different in nature, but there is one common thread that binds, and that's an investment in the people of Scotland. The changes we will make are changes we know are needed because we are listening to people with the lived experience and responding to what they say, ensuring that they are treated with dignity and respect. 
Presiding officer, these are the principles we set out for Social Security last year, and the timetable I set out today shows our determination to bring those to life as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you. I would encourage members who haven't pressed, who wish to speak or ask a question to do so now, press the request to seat buttons. And I call on Adam Tompkins to be followed by Polly McNeill. Adam Tompkins. Thank you, presenting officer. I thank the um, Cabinet Secretary for early sight of first statement today. Since before last year's Scottish parliamentary election, we've been calling on the Scottish Government to get on with the job of delivering on the substantial array of social security powers devolved under David Cameron's Conservative Government. So it would be churlish of me not to welcome this statement, even if it comes some months later than it should have done. Even now, however, much of today's statement merely reheats things that we've known for a long time, like the fact that Scottish ministers simply cannot deliver devolved social security without the ongoing help and assistance of the UK's DWP, help and assistance which we on these benches warmly welcome. Yet even now, significant holes remain in the Cabinet Secretary's account. She talks of the new Scottish Social Security Agency, but says nothing about where it is to be located, about how many DWP and other job losses there will be as the new agency takes on its responsibilities, or about how its eye-watering £150 million a year annual running cost has been calculated, or indeed how that figure is to be paid for. So let me ask this. On best start, the value of the grant for the first child is to go up. The value of the grant for second and subsequent children is to go up. And in addition, there are now to be two further payments to children in eligible families. Over the course of this parliament, what will this cost, assuming ministers are access successful in increasing the grant's uptake as they wish to be? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, President officer, of course it's too much to expect the Tories to give a, a wholehearted welcome of the progress that we have made actually collectively uh, over the past year. And of course I have to remind the member that the tranche two of the regulations only commenced last month. So here I am uh, less than a month later on my feet in Parliament, keeping Parliament as I should informed of every milestone and every step of the way. This is a journey that we will travel together and this government will be proactive uh, in informing all members of this chamber and those who utilise uh, the services, whether they're reserve services uh, or uh, devolved. We will ensure that their views uh, inform uh, our deeds and our actions. And of course, it's too much to expect the, Sto the Tories to welcome the progress that we are making that starting from uh, next year, we will be putting money uh, into the pockets, uh, pockets of hard pressed families, uh, the bereaved and those people who are caring for a loved one. Because these are the families, these are the people who are most impacted by Tory austerity. These are the people who are paying the price for Tory cuts paying the price for Tory cruelty and paying the price for Tory complexity in the current uh, system. And with regards to his specific questions around best start grant, that will be £20 million, Mr Tompkins. And you may recall that not that long ago, the Minister for Social Security came to this chamber, made a very full statement uh, on the operating model of the Social Security Agency. And in that statement said that there would be a further appraisals uh, option to go through before we made a statement on the location of the agency uh, this autumn. And with regards to the costs of this agency, I would have thought that Mr. Tompkins, that the professor, the good professor, would have by now read the outline business case that was published on the 27th of April, that he would have read it cover to cover and would now be standing in this chamber reciting it backwards in Latin. Thank you, President Officer. Pauline McNeill to be followed by Sandra White. Scottish Labour welcomes the announcement of the first Social Security benefits and we particularly welcome the plans for Best Start grant uh, introduced in summer 2019, replacing the Sure Start Maternity grant, an important measure in tackling uh, child poverty. I want to begin by asking the Cabinet Secretary in relation to the Best Start grant, an important measure for low income families, if she's able to say now or write to me about how many families will be helped by this. I'm interested in this information as I'm sure she will agree that high levels of in-work poverty I think require measures that include uh, those low-income families who are in work. Furthermore, 
Does the Cabinet Secretary agree that given the uptake of this benefit is only at 50 per cent, that it needs to be a very high priority in improving this situation? A radical approach is required, I would suggest, including a commitment to an advertising campaign or a promotional campaign encouraging people to apply for these benefits? And will the Cabinet Secretary also consider that in relation to that benefit, that lo working with local authorities on automating benefits, given that many of them are linked to eligibility um, in the benefit system, I would she agree that a more radical approach is needed? And if we don't do that, it's important when the transfer of the Social Security budget from the UK Government to the Scottish Government will determine the budget for the future. So it's important to begin that work now. Cabinet Secretary. Sign off, I thank um, Ms McNeill for the tone and tenor of her question. She is right to point out uh, the impact of the new Best Start grant and the additional income that it can get to low-income families uh, throughout the course uh, of a child's early years. And I know that later on in the week we'll be debating uh, the, the Child Poverty Bill, uh, but it's important to stress that the new Best, uh, Best Start grant can make a very uh, positive contribution to things such as material uh, deprivation uh, as well as improving and, you know, the general life uh, and uh, health and educational uh, attainment of uh, children. Um, in terms of uh, the expected uh, claimant uh, or uh, the, the headcount, we expect 62,000 uh, claimants to be benefiting uh, from the, the, the Best Start grant. Uh, she is right to say that we uh, have work to do uh, to improve uh, take-up. Uh, we are looking at the issue of uh, automation. And of course, the point that she makes linking the benefit take-up campaign with uh, the budget uh, and the resource that will be transferred uh, from West Westminster is indeed very uh, important. Although, like me, she will be aware uh, that Westminster have this habit uh, of changing the goalposts uh, before resources uh, are actually uh, transferred. But of course, I'm sure we'll all be ever vigilant to that. Sandra White to be followed by Gordon Linders. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her statement? Uh, in particular, you know, the announcement that carers' allowance will be increased for Scottish carers, uh, bringing much needed additional support to carers who do, I uh, think we all agree, so much to support families and friends. Uh, can the Cabinet Secretary tell me and Parliament uh, how many people will benefit from this increase when it is introduced? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, President officer, I'm delighted to say that this increase will benefit almost 70,000 carers in Scotland uh, and the increase will cover the whole uh, of the next financial year in 2018. It has been a long-standing policy uh, of our party and government to make this increase uh, and I'm delighted uh, that we are making this announcement and that it's our government, uh, our Scottish government, that is proceeding with this. As I said earlier, uh, I hope that the next UK government uh, will follow our uh, suit. It should maybe be remembered uh, by opposition members in particular that, uh, of course, our progress is dependent upon uh, the Scottish parliamentary timetable, which uh, is not in the hands of government, but rightly in the hands uh, of members of this parliament. Uh, UK uh, regulations which transfer competence for carers allowed to the Scottish Parliament uh, came into force this month and the next stage is of course legislation, uh, a very vital part of our democratic process. So I am confident that we'll uh, work together as the Social Security Bill uh, goes through its legislative stages uh, so that we uh, are indeed in a position to deliver this benefit from next year. Gordon Lindhurst to be followed by Ruth McGuire. Um, the, the Cabinet Secretary adverted to this in her statement. The Scottish Government has invited people with lived recent experience of benefit to join experience panels to help inform decisions as it moves forward with its development of a Scottish social security system. And uh, I would welcome that because my understanding from, is the stated intention is to ensure that the system works. Uh, my question, therefore, for the Cabinet Secretary is the following. What is the Scottish Government doing to bring into consideration in a similar fashion the experience of individuals who work to deliver the services in question from the other side of the equation, as it were? And if I could make clear, I'm talking about the individuals rather than their representatives, whether trade unions or otherwise, whom the Government no doubt will have uh, consulted or uh, spoke with or spoken to. Cabinet Secretary. 
Uh, I thank Mr uh, Lindhurst for his question and for his endorsement of the importance of the experience panels. It's a great success uh, that around 2,300 people uh, are volunteering uh, their time and their expertise uh, to ensure that as we progress in this journey together, that we get every stage, that we get every milestone and every detail uh, absolutely right. I think he raises an important point about the experience uh, of those who currently work uh, within DWP. Indeed, we have former employees of the DWP uh, now working uh, within the Scottish Government. Uh, he is right, we do indeed liaise with uh, employee representatives uh, through uh, P PCS uh, and will uh, continue to do so. But we are open to uh, different forms of communication about how we uh, liaise with those and can listen to those who are currently working in the coalface under quite difficult uh, circumstances uh, in terms of you know, the austerity agenda and uh, the massive challenges that the UK government is currently facing uh, in terms of uh, rollout of, of universal credit. So uh, that coalface experience of DWP staff is indeed important to listen to but also is the experience of voluntary sector staff uh, who you know, work in their advice services and who are also seeing firsthand uh, the impact uh, of uh, some of the most uh, cruelest cuts and uncaring aspects uh, of the, the, the current uh, reserved service. Ruth McGuire to be followed by Richard Leonard. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary said that the take-up for Sure Start and funeral assistance is low and therefore people have not been getting the financial support they're eligible for. Can the Cabinet Secretary clarify when the Scottish Government have successfully increased take-up, what additional resources the UK Government could provide to further encourage people to take up benefits that they are el eligible for and entitled to but who are not currently making claims? Cabinet Secretary. Officer, it's a good point because under the fiscal framework, the UK Government will not provide the Scottish Government with additional resources if benefit take-up rates in Scotland are higher than the rest of the UK. But nonetheless, that will not stop us in our duty uh, to increase uh, some of the abysmal rates of take-up of benefits uh, that people are actually uh, eligible for. The UK Government to date has done, uh, in my view, very little to encourage uh, benefit take-up or indeed to help people with the application process by simplifying the process. And I think it's ridiculous, it's quite a damning indictment of the current system that we talk about people having to navigate their way through uh, the benefit system. So getting the financial support you're entitled to can make a huge difference uh, to people's lives. And I see that as a key role uh, of government. Unfortunately, uh, the Tories don't see that as a key responsibility of government. Richard Leonard to be followed by George Adam. Uh, thanks, Presiding Officer. Uh, can I welcome the Cabinet Secretary's commitment to make the application process for funeral expense assistance uh, more straightforward uh, and also to provide a timious response to applicants for this assistance? These are two of the key recommendations of the February 2016 uh, Citizens Advice Scotland report. Will she recognise that the other key recommendation in that section of the report was that the payment should be, and I quote, set at a level to allow for the full payment of a basic funeral in any part of Scotland. Can she confirm if she has come to a conclusion on this? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Sign officer, thank Mr Leonard uh, for his uh, thoughtful question and I know that he and his colleague Mark Griffin have done a lot of work around the issue of funeral payments but also the, the, the broader issue uh, of funeral poverty and I hope it will be uh, of some assurance to Mr Leonard and his colleagues that the work that we are taking forward uh, around funeral expense assistance is at an advanced stage but it mustn't be um, out of sync or out of tandem with the broader work that we are doing to address funeral poverty. So we have other commitments um, whereby we are working with the funeral industry, uh, working with local authorities uh, and working with those advice uh, services as, as well. And uh, during the summer I hope to make a further announcement around our commitments around uh, a funeral uh, cost plan. So while we are still um, to finalise the exact uh, eligibility uh, criteria. Uh, there are a number of issues um, about process, about payments, um, about what we could agree to uh, in, in principle. Um, there is you know, a recognition that there is um, quite an uncertainty in complex uh, details that we uh, need to remove 
uh, from uh, the system. So uh, we are looking at that all in detail. That work is at an advanced stage. Uh, take the members' views on board. We know there's a real issue with funeral poverty uh, in this country. Uh, we'll do our damnedest to address it, but cut through the complexity and give more certainty to applicants, as well as the broader issues of addressing uh, the, the rising cost of funerals, which over the past 10 years on average has risen by 92%. George Adam, followed by Alison Johnson. Thank you, President Officer. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that with the with the Tories determined to treat children as unequal and no longer supporting the third or subsequent child of low-income families through the capping of child tax credits, that larger low-income families will be significantly worse off no matter what the outcome of next week's election. Can the Cabinet uh, Secretary explain the difference the new Best Start grant can make to low-income families with three or more children? Cabinet Secretary. So, you know, as perhaps by way of example, I can uh, reiterate that our Best Start grant will provide the first child uh, in a family with three payments totalling uh, £1,100 uh, over their early years. Uh, every subsequent children will receive payments totalling £800. For a family with three children, this means a financial investment of 2700 during their early years. And for a family with four children, uh, that's an investment of £3,500. That, of course, it compares with just £500 per family for the UK government's current uh, Sure Start maternity grant. And, of course, as we see uh, income being taken away from poorer families uh, by the Tories through you know, major changes to universal credit uh, and other benefits, we know that families, many families, larger ones in particular, will be struggling uh, to manage. And Whilst it might feel like we're fighting poverty with uh, one hand tied behind our back in the face of austerity, we are nonetheless uh, determined to provide a better future uh, for low-income families through a number of measures, including uh, our new Best Start grant. Alison Johnson to be followed by Alex Cole-Hamilton. Um, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of the statement and welcome the announcement that carers allowance will increase to JSA level in 2018. However, there's evidence to suggest that the allowance is used to meet the costs of caring as well as to replace lost income through not working, and this wouldn't be covered by the increase proposed. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what assessment of the costs of caring she's undertaken in determining the increase and whether the Cabinet Secretary is considering a premium for carers who care for more than one person incurring extra costs? Thank you. Cabinet Secretary. Presiding officer, uh, the member will be aware that we are uh, certainly uh, considering and have indeed a, a manifesto commitment uh, to provide carers allowance uh, for people who are caring for more than one uh, disabled uh, child. Uh, and that, in addition to the matters uh, that she raises, uh, will be for the consideration of the Carer Benefit Advisory Group, who indeed uh, will give us that expert advice. Uh, she will know from her engagement with the Minister for Social Security that we work very closely uh, with health colleagues so that we are uh, looking at the needs of carers and the support that they need in the most uh, holistic uh, response. And it's also important, once again, to ex express the importance of the experience uh, panel, those 2,300 uh, volunteers uh, who will walk this journey uh, with us all and who will indeed uh, be advising us of the issues uh, that Ms Johnson has raised today and indeed on other occasions. Alex Crowell Hamilton to be followed by Ben McPherson. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I thank the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of her statement. I echo much of the praise that's been given to her in its regard. Uh, I want to particularly focus on the welcome that I have for the funeral expense assistance. Now, how we help those in grief is a measure of a civilised society. I was recently contacted by a constituent who is very sadly widowed in her 30s. She's part of an organisation called Widowed and Young. She brought uh, my attention to the fact that following changes to the widowed parents' allowance, newly bereaved spouses could miss out on as much as 17 years worth of financial support. Can the Cabinet Secretary tell me what representations the Scottish Government has made to Westminster on this regard and whether it has looked into options to use new powers coming to this place to ensure that vulnerable families do not miss out on support they should be entitled to following such a time of loss? Cabinet Secretary. 
President uh, Officer, can I assure Mr Cole Hamilton that the Minister for Social Security very uh, quickly uh, wrote to the UK Government when it became apparent uh, that they were withdrawing uh, you know, significant su su financial support uh, to bereaved parents uh, and indeed their uh, children. It went against the grain of what they had said previously. Previously they said that they would be looking at reform, uh, but the reform wouldn't uh, involve a cut. Of course, we have heard uh, all that uh, before. The point he makes about uh, how we support people uh, in their time of need, in their time of bereavement, when they're working through grief, uh, I think is uh, very well made. Uh, so we are making representations to, to the UK government um, and indeed we've received representations from uh, concerned uh, citizens in Scotland uh, also. And in terms of the broader point he makes in and around you know, mitigation, we can and do mitigate. We will continue to have that very uh, lively debate. But of course, our ability uh, to mitigate is not an excuse uh, for a callous Tory government just to proceed and do whatever ever, uh, that they like. And we have to recognise that you know, we will have 15% of welfare spend in due course. That gives us enormous uh, opportunities, but it won't necessarily address all the inherent unfairness in the remaining uh, 85%. But, of course, uh, we are alive uh, to all the debates in this matter. Ben McPherson to be followed by Graeme Simpson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I also welcome the progress and measures outlined in the statement, but I'm concerned whether the Cabinet Secretary anticipates any UK government cuts to funding for the benefits she mentioned before the point of transfer, especially given that if the Conservatives get back into power at Westminster, we may face cuts to the winter fuel allowance. And what would be the impact of such a cut? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, President Officer, as we've seen uh, with the winter fuel payment that Mr McPherson mentioned, no benefit uh, is safe in the hands of the Tories and any cut in benefits that are due to be devolved that is carried out in advance of the funding being transferred will automatically mean a cut uh, in resources transferred to Scotland. And of course the Tories have a track record uh, in this regard when they cut by 87% uh, employability funding before uh, the employability programmes were uh, transferred uh, to uh, uh, Scotland. We of course see social security as uh, an investment uh, in our people uh, and the most recent uh, announcement, uncosted announcement uh, by the, the Tory government in terms of their manifesto is nothing short of an assault on pensioners at a time when pensioner poverty uh, is rising and it just demonstrates uh, that the, the nasty party uh, is back in town. Graeme Simpson to be followed by John Mason. Funeral poverty um, is a huge issue. Has the Scottish Government assessed the cost of the new funeral expense assistance and given that there's such a wide variation in fees charged by councils and funeral directors across Scotland, will the assistance cover all the costs wherever they are incurred, uh, with the cost of a basic burial varying from £701 in the Western Isles to £2,253 in Edinburgh, and cremations range, ranging from £552 in Inverclyde to £849 in Highlands, has work been done to ensure that those in the most expensive areas don't lose out? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, of course, President Officer, uh, Mr Simpson raises very important matters, matters that are indeed uh, issues uh, for our colleagues in local government. He is perhaps uh, not aware, uh, obviously by the, the tone of his question, uh, that at the end of last year I held a funeral poverty uh, conference uh, and prior to that chaired three roundtables, one with local government uh, the other with advice services and other uh, experts and the, the third uh, round table was indeed with the, the, the funeral uh, industry because there is a huge variation in cost uh, across the country. Uh, we will continue to have that dialogue uh, with COSLA uh, as we move forward. Uh, I want to be making progress over the summer months with our commitment uh, to announce a funeral uh, costs uh, plan uh, and it's important that the work around funeral expense assistance uh, is not seen in isolation uh, from that uh, broader work and that work needs to be connected uh, and will be done in tandem. Okay. And John Mason. Thank you. Uh, there has been discussion around the timetable of all this introduction. I wonder how she feels it compares to previous major changes like when Labour brought in the child tax credits, Tories brought in universal credit. And can she commit to keeping to the timetable she's laid out? 
Cabinet Secretary. President Officer, I, I remain very confident that we will deliver on our timetable because what we have not done, as the current Tory UK government has done, is we've not been pushed into making arbitrary eh, or unreachable promises on dates. And this is uh, particularly important uh, when we have to work uh, closely with the DWP uh, to ensure the, the smooth delivery of, of benefits for uh, the people of Scotland. As John Mason uh, rightly states, uh, other benefits that we've seen uh, implemented uh, by the UK government, whether for good or ill, have taken much longer. And that is with an existing uh, infrastructure in place. And we're building uh, Scotland's social security system uh, from scratch. And that infrastructure uh, is very necessary uh, alongside the other essential component uh, we, which we need, which is the, the legislation which I spoke about uh, earlier. So in short, President Officer, we are confident that we can deliver on the timetable uh, that we announced today. Thank you very much. And that concludes our statement on social security benefits. We're now moving on to a statement from Minister Shirley-Anne Somerville on widening access to education. We'll just take a few moments for members to change seats.